Hi everyone, it's Renee with Delaney Jane Cards. Welcome back to my channel. I thought I would do a project today featuring some Pink and Main products. I love Pink and Main. I have been collecting their Samson dies for a long time. Long enough that I believe this scallop border die set is actually um, retired. This is a newer set here. These concave rectangles. They have the stitch detail and I thought that they would be fun to use. Um, off screen, I stamped the uh, a few of the images from that pirate set. Uh, I got ha I have the bundle, so I will link that below. It's got um, the pirate ship and a couple little pirate critters. I think I used the bear and the raccoon in this pirate ship. Um, and this is actually like a get well soon card, <laughs> which I don't really make many of, but I, I think I should. I think um, this day and age, get well soon cards are probably the best to have on hand. Uh, and this would be really cute for uh, a kid. So I just used some E70 markers here to color my little ship. It's such a cute little set. These images are adorable. Um, I have watched the pink and main uh, images kind of evolve from, I mean, a few years back. They were like very whimsical and had lots of swirls and dots and lines in them. I mean, they were cute. But the more that the uh, images evolve, the more I find that I really love them. They're very good for coloring. They're most of them have big enough images where you can practice your color blends, but they're not so giant that it will take you all day to color. Um, this coloring is sped up two times. So it's, I mean, I don't color very fast, um, but it's not, a, it's, it's not so time consuming that, you know, you need to sit down all day and color. Uh, so after I put that first layer of color down, I realized that I, I needed a little more dimension in this because the ship is like rounded. Um, so you need to, I needed to make sure I added a little bit more dimension. Uh, and then I also was coloring this basket. And I think that's, I forget what it's called. Maybe it's the bird's nest. And that's where the lookout guy with the, the big eyeglass yells, land ho. That's what he's doing up there. <laughs> um, and then I just used my the same browns to just kind of color the whole ship in. I decided to color this um, sail so that it was, I guess, white, um, added the shadows, and then I realized that there's like a wooden piece at the top. I don't know anything about pirate ships, so if you do, stop laughing at me because I, I don't really know. Um, <laughs> and then... I think this big sail here is probably supposed to be white, but then the little, I don't know, we're a pirate skull and crossbones that's on top probably wouldn't stand out. So I decided to color that like it was black. And I'm not sure I've ever gotten my C10 marker out. I don't know. I just um, usually stop before the 10 because that feels just like black. Um, but I'm going ahead and I'm going around this little cartoony skull and crossbones it says like danger we're pirates and um i went around that and then just filled it in <laughs> i was like i don't know uh, i do decide um to add a little bit more shadowing here to this um to this flag on the side i just i don't know felt like it needed more shadows and then, you know, added a little bit of gray to the, the netting. And you know what? T to this day, I don't understand why the netting is there. Like, is that so you don't fall off the ship while you're trying to climb up? I, I don't know. Um, and then this flag on top, I decided to color with some reds. I did save the red for last because it does tend to get to, you know, all the places. And I wasn't sure what colors I was going to use when I first started. I don't know. Do you pull out your colors and, like for the whole card and, and get started. Cause I don't like, even here I pulled out what I was going to use for this bear. And I had no clue at this point what I was going to use for the raccoon because I cannot think that far ahead. I don't know. Those people that have everything planned out, I don't know how you do it because I never do. Sometimes I will 
like sketch out a card idea or I use card sketches a lot to create a card. But as far as colors, I mean, even those color combo challenges, I hardly ever can wrap my head around doing those because I don't know, once I get started, then I'm like, oh no, it needs this color to make it look better. It would look better if it had this color contrast. And so I, I am not so good at, at playing along with those. Are you good at color challenges? Um, I'm just curious. <laughs> so here I was deciding that this bear was going to be kind of a reddy brown, reddy, reddish, reddish brown color. I'm using just some e-markers to toss in some shadows where I think there's going to be shadows. He's a very cartoon bear. Even when I color him, he still looks like he's flat stamped on a piece of paper. I think he's super adorable. And like I said, he's got good space to practice your Copic coloring, but there's also some tiny spaces so you can practice not being perfect in all the areas. You don't have to shade everything. I mean, like on that ship, I just filled in the one sail because I shaded the boat and that was good enough. Focus on something, color it the best that you know how, and you know, just go from there. You don't have to be, you don't have to shade everything. Everything doesn't have to have, you know, 80 colors in it. You can just fill it in. It's okay. <laughs> it's fine. Nobody is going to look at you when you give them a card and go, I can't believe you only used one color on here because it's just, that's just not how people are. Um, after I got him in like his background, his body, his background, his body colored in, I went for his little muzzle thing. Is that what it is on the bear? His nose, his muzzle, his whatever, snout. Is it a snout on the bear? And I colored that in and now I'm going to add a little bit of shading where I think there should be shading. Um, but nothing really particular. You see, I'm just using two colors here to kind of, kind of add a little bit of shading. Um, nothing, nothing fantastic. I didn't add the deeper, darker color because I wanted to leave that in like the outer part of his body, but there definitely wasn't enough contrast. So I did go back in and add that E15 back in just a little bit. Um, and then for his sword, I'm just using a neutral gray and three, just filling it in. I also did his nose and I do think later on I add like glaze pen to his nose because I got a brand new one if you haven't been paying attention. My one exploded and I had it forever and I got a new one finally. So yay, that was, I just kept forgetting. Anytime I put in an order after I was done, I was like, oh no, I am not paying shipping for one glaze pen and I am not, I'm not driving to the store for a glaze pen. Um, normally it wouldn't be that big, big of a deal, but they did road construction right outside of my neighborhood. So it was terrible. It finally opened back up yesterday and and I still don't want to go anywhere. Um, but it was, it was terrible. It was like a seven mile <laughs> detour just to go five miles down the road. And I, I just wasn't doing it. So, I mean, I'm, I'm grateful that, you know, all the people that do that, do that, but I hate road construction and if I can avoid it, I will. So anytime I put in an order and I forgot, I was just like, well, it can just wait. I just can't, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here I'm just finishing up his gray and his black. And then I decided what I was going to do for this raccoon. And even when I started coloring, I still really didn't know how I was going to color him in. I just was like, well, I see he's got all the stripes on his tail. So he's probably a raccoon. And usually, you know, you have like the dark gray and then like, uh, not really white, but a very light gray or even a tan stripe. Uh, I haven't been super close to a raccoon in a very long time, so unless I look them up, I really don't know what they look like. Uh, but I decided to color the whole thing in um, with a blanket, a blanket, oh, a single layer of color, but like shaded. You see how it's like shaded from there to light. Then I decided to go in and darken every other stripe going the other way, just so that um, there would be a little bit of contrast in his tail, and I think it worked out fine. I don't know. Do you, what do you think? <laughs> Can you tell he's a raccoon? Is he supposed to be a raccoon? I'm just not, I'm not, I don't know. 
I am not the good one for the animals. You should ask my two-year-old. She probably would know exactly what animal it is, what sound it makes, and could probably tell you where it lives. But, not me. <laughs> so here I was just finishing up. You can see I'm using the warm grays for my animal. Um, my animal. My raccoon. Is he a raccoon? Well, let's decide he is. Uh, I'm using the warm grays. I like my warm grays for critters and like people's hair and things that are going to go on something that is alive and squishy. Um, but sometimes I use cool grays too. I've also been known to mix them. You see, I used the neutral grays for the bear's hat and his sword. Cool gray would have worked really well there because steel is kind of a cool gray color. Uh, that would have worked fantastic, but I went with neutral because I wasn't sure what I was going to do with this little creature over here. If I was going to color him in with, you know, cool grays or I don't know. I had no idea. I, I didn't think that had, that far ahead. You, you know, I already told you that. I cannot plan. Um, I try. I try faithfully. I cannot plan. I'll tell you a little story about planning. Last year, you know, in the year that we will not discuss, I had a planner. And I was very faithful with writing down my videos and when they go live. And I had like Christmas lists and birthdays and all that stuff in there. And when I downsized my craft space, I threw it away. Yeah, I know. I threw my planner away. So I have, I have no idea where anybody lives, when their birthday is. I have all that research and then jotting down. I, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. I, that's how I just, no, don't trust me to plan anything. I can't <laughs> just, I know my faults and that's one of them. I am incapable of planning the things. So here I was just kind of taking each piece of this little raccoon guy and shading them individually. If I, I find if I color like the whole thing in, I kind of lose track of what pieces and parts go to what. So I, I try to do this when I color flowers, I kind of do the same thing. Like one petal, this is like one, one ham hock at a time, one side at a time, one stripe at a time. Um, that's, that's how I did that. And then I decided he's got this little, like uh, what is it? A bandana on his head. I decided to color that red to add an additional pop of red because I colored the flag red on the ship. And I used the same color combination here to do that. And then I'm going to color, I think, um, I think his little, uh, what is it? It's a looking glass thing. It's the thing that they yell, like, land ho with. What is that? Is it a spyglass or, I don't know, his little looker thing. I colored that yellow. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's just not, it's been a long day. Um, these papers are from Pink and Main. I get the Pink and Main kit every month and I love them. Uh, so even the cardstock is some, the like aqua color, it's some basil cardstock that I got in a kit. So here I was just kind of laying out what I was thinking. Um, I did use that scallop border die to cut my panel. Um, so that's where that came in. I mean, if that is retired, I'm sure you could use, I don't know, anything to do this, even scissors. You don't have to have this little wavy edge, but I thought it was cool. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to emboss this waves um, embossing folder onto this panel. I did like put a piece of tape behind it to hold it back together. Uh, and this, it, to me, it, it not only looks like waves, but it also looks like, like wind. So I thought it would be kind of fun to emboss this panel. Um, and I, I'm just going to ink blend some colors on it. Uh, most of my ink pads are the tiny ones. And, uh, I like them. <laughs> they fit in the little container, but the newer ink pads I have in the, the larger size because they didn't have the little ones yet. And I don't know. I just, um, I have so little space that I will probably, I probably won't change them out, but in the future, if I can hold out, I will probably just continue to buy the small ones because, um, they, they fit better in my space. I am using the pink and main blending brushes. I like them. Uh, I have um, issues with my shoulders and sometimes the issues that I have with my shoulders lead to really weak hands. Um, I have nerves that are pinched and it, it, 
so it makes my hands super tired really easy. Um, so these I did find that I liked. I did pick up a bunch of blending brushes recently and I like them as well. Um, I, I don't know. Ink blending has always been kind of tough on my shoulders, but I, I need, I need them fixed. I need to have surgery on them and I just don't have the time yet. So we're going to have to deal with tired hands. So that's why you see me drop things in my videos often or like have a hard time picking them up because my hands are actually pretty weak. <laughs> um, so here I was just, you know, trying to see how I wanted this to be laid out once I put it on my, my card. And I did die cut this, um, wavy panel with one of those concave rectangles as well as the, the image panel or what is that focal panel and um, this fish paper in the background here is just trimmed out just a little bit smaller than my um, a2 sized uh, aqua paper in the background i'm just going to center this on here and i just they were their papers work so well together everything works so beautifully and this pattern paper that i chose for right behind this focal panel does remind me of waves and sky so i thought that it would be perfect here. I popped up the bottom piece of this with some foam tape so that I could tuck that ship in. I'm going to go ahead and mount all of my little critters here. The bear has foam tape on the top of him and then he is adhered with liquid adhesive by his feet. And I'm going to do kind of the same with this raccoon. He's got a little piece of foam tape behind his head and then the rest of him is adhered with liquid adhesive. The boat the ship is a ship because it's a pirate ship. Yeah, pirate ship <laughs> is going to be adhered directly to the background with adhesive, liquid adhesive. I use Nouveau. Um, I like that one. It's nice on my hands. I am grabbing some of the new, um, I forget what it's called, the pink and main adhesive. I want to see if I, if it's easy to squeeze. Uh, and then I did add a little sentiment that I stamped and I cut off screen or I probably trimmed out. Um, it says, <laughs> are you doing well? Which I thought was super adorable and I thought it fit there really nice. I just had trimmed out a fishtail banner on the end and now I'm going to add some glossy accents just for a little bit of shine. I wanted this to stay kind of childlike and masculine or basically gender neutral. Um, you could give this card to anybody, even a grumpy old man or a, uh, you know, old woman that, that likes her tea. She would still get a kick out of this. Uh, I did, I did add it to the little skull and crossbones. Um, I would love to know what you think of my card. I really enjoyed sharing it. I love Pink and Main's products and I'm not affiliated with them at all. Um, I just am really a fan. And, um, here is a close up picture of my card. I appreciate you stopping by. And as I always say, give cards generously. Bye.